All right, kind of response video to a TED Talks video. I was going to make a more elaborate video, but the video really wasn't worth it. There wasn't enough um, real argument in it or real science in it to even argue with. I mean, it was just mush. So I'll post a link wherever, you know, however, somewhere. Um, and, uh, you know, to this lady scientist, no offense, but, you know, this is the phantasmagorical wave of the future, right? Science isn't really science anymore. It's an adventure. It's something you play with. It's a playground. Uh, it's something. It's an entertainment. It's a field of entertainment. It's performance art, even. Yes, you know, I mean, she's talking about how she goes into the caves, and that's part of the whole experience of doing the science, apparently. And it's, you know, it's interesting, but it's not science. It's adventuring. It's adventurism, but it's not science. It's nonsense. So anyway, her premises, I mean, they're just so bad. Um, so she's arguing basically that there's life all over the universe, then we should waste our time, go look for it, because somehow it's going to be really interesting because the little microbe that we're going to find might be metabolizing some chemical into another chemical. whoop de doo It might even breathe fire. <laughs> Who cares? It's really not going to be that fascinating. It's still certainly not going to be worth the zillions of dollars she would like to spend to go flopping around the universe, sending our little probes all over the place looking for this, this life that does not exist. <laughs> um, at least that we have no reason to believe exists. No logical reason. Um, so that's one of her premises. She thinks there's a 50-50 chance there's life on Mars. She thinks, you know, I don't know what the exact odds she thinks for the rest of the universe are, but she thinks it's plentiful, and she offers no explanation for why she thinks that, because she has nothing. There's, there's nothing, there's no evidence that on this planet, any other life form but a DNA molecule, you know, encased in a uh, mechanical functioning membrane that facilitated the action of the DNA molecule is the only life form that exists on this planet. There's no duplicate, there's no parallel, there's no there's no other alternative mechanism. There's no other reproducing chemistry on this planet. And logically one would think there would be if this was a process that happened routinely or prolifically. If there was lots of chemistry that could uh, manifest <laughs> this um, reproducing mechanism. So it seems pretty obvious, and then when you add to that fact that, you know, scientifically we haven't even been able to duplicate the chemistry that created us, let alone any alternative reproducing chemistry capable of evolution, um, the fact that, you know, we can't even do that with our electron microscopes and all the rest of our scientific tools um, is just a clear indication that this is not... This is not abundant chemistry. This is not routine chemistry. This is very specific and unique chemistry that took place on planet Earth four billion years ago. It's not happening today. It didn't happen yesterday. It happened four billion years ago uh, in a very specific, specific environment with very specific chemistry under very specific circumstances. Um, so this does not happen all over the universe, okay? Even if you have a planet Earth, it may not happen. Uh, you know, a duplicate of Earth, the same, same basic chemistry, just minus the first microbe. Um, who knows? We don't even know what the odds are of a microbe ever developing, because we don't know how, how many lotteries in a row is a good is the way I'll analogize it. We don't know how many lotteries in a row were essentially won by circumstance to enable life to even happen. The first reproducing cell. It might have been ten, nine million to one lotteries won in sequence for it to happen. We don't know how rare and unusual and bizarre we really are. Um, and as the winners of the impossible odds lottery that it may be, of course, it seems to us, well, it must be easy because it happened. <laughs> you know, uh, that's the way every winner always looks at it and says, gee, that was easy. <laughs> you know, no, no big deal. Uh, but it is a big deal. And it's just, it's silly science to not realize that that's, that's every indication of real science and real logic points to the, the, um, the unlikelihood of there being uh, reproducing life in the first place, cells, I mean, you know, chemistry capable of reproduction, 
let alone chemistry that has evolved a sentience, a capacity to feel, and then evolved an intelligence on top of that, and then an intelligence that has a capacity, a potential beyond what natural selection would routinely give it, which we possess. Our intelligence was given to us, our potential intelligence, before we were even capable of using it. So it wasn't even selected by natural selection. It was, it was retained as an artifact, as a, as a consequence of something else that natural selection um, had appreciation for, which was a capacity to reason. But it had no, it, it, it had never selected for our capacity to store great knowledge in our brains and create a culture and civilizations. Um, and there's every likelihood, from the looks of what we're doing with civilization, that in the end, natural selection will say intelligence at our level was a failure. We will not be able to survive the, um, the age of technology because we don't have the disposition, we don't have the character um, as intelligences to overcome our nature, which is crude and selfish and brutal and pretty stupid. <laughs> and uh, so the same, the same circumstance would be facing any other life form um, that ever did develop on any other planet. There, there's just huge odds against intelligent life existing in the universe because it has no real value. Any intelligence beyond finding a more creative way to put the food in your mouth and to put your sex organs in the proper place is not something nature has any interest in. Natural selection will never have any interest in that, okay? Because it's not conducive to the ambitions of any reproducing mechanism and that's going to be the origin of any intelligence in the universe its origin is going to be in the dna or whatever the reproducing molecule of its chemistry whatever that might be and that that is always going to have the same ambition the, the origin cell is always going to have only two ambitions which are consumption and reproduction that's the nature of life and to do any better than that requires an extraordinary um, good fortune, or whatever you want to call it. I mean, just the odds are against intelligence being able to capitalize or make that any more sophisticated or to add, or, or, or add any better mission to it because the liabilities of intelligence are, are going to outweigh the benefits of it when it's put in the hands of that crude DNA monster. And we still are a crude DNA monster. We are still more about our personal selfish consumption than we are about any um, ambition uh, that doesn't have something to do with our self-interest. And as long as that's the, as long as that's the, the meme, the culture that owns the, the mind of man, uh, this will not succeed. Intelligence will fail, in the end. Um, so anyway, her. Her unicorny, happy, you know, golden, whatever, um, view of life and its presence in the universe is is nothing but a a fairy tale. It's a it's 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 a it's a pretty story written over the truth because the truth says something entirely different. Um, there's nothing beautiful in consumption and reproduction, especially the way nature does it, uh, without any consideration for the harm it imposes. So this is this is just this is just silly talk. <laughs> this is not science. It's silly. And um, you know, one of her arguments, even you can you can, it was just so obvious how how much disregard there is for logic. Um, because she said, well, the animals will be hiding in caves because of predation, because of the predators. What predators? If they're the only molecules on Earth, they're not going to hide in a cave. No, they're going to expand into the, the more rich and food-rich atmosphere where they can, you know, um, metabolize chemistry much quicker and much more prolifically and do a lot more reproducing. They're not going to hide in a slow, cold um, inactive chemistry when they can expand into a very active and dynamic um, chemical environment. So even there, her logic is just vacant. Um, you know, and this is what they call scientists, and this is what they have on stage making presentations, and it's it's pretty dismal. 
So anyway, that's my commentary regarding another TED Talks.